Hey, what is up everybody? If you missed it, we're playing Like a Vault this week. What do you mean you missed it? Well, you didn't check out my community tab, which you see above. I did a poll to see what deck people wanted me to play this week on the app. If you want to get in on the next poll, it should be live when you see this video drop, or make sure you hit that notification bell and subscribe so you don't miss the poll notification. With that being said, we're going to jump into the deck. Obviously, as I mentioned, we're doing a Like a Vault deck, and I really want to try to make a deck that focused on Like a Vault's strengths. And that is attacking. So we have a lot of rune disruption, stuff like that. So let's just go through each card. Like a vault, it's a 6-2. That whenever it destroys an electrical in battle, allows your lucky opponent's hand and discard a card from their hand. That's a pretty powerful effect. Being able to disrupt your opponent's hand is pretty good, especially if you can use that to remove invoke runes. But their only real answer to like a vault is either getting over it or they can counter rune to disrupt it. But it's hard to get over it because if you just cut your discard your amp ups which is the next card it'll pump like a vault attack by two as well so amp up you can discard one amp up and a thunder to search for more amp ups from your deck put them in your hand which on its own isn't that great but you can combine it with a card like drops a leaf to make that a plus one draw and to recycle cards out of your hand that you don't need it's pretty effective and it pushes like a vault up to eight attack when you do that at least once which is a really strong attack stat for a two drop the next card we have on the deck is spark it we're using that to disrupt your opponent's hand just like we will with like a vault getting a spark it in zeus on turn one is basically like a 10 percent chance or less even with three copies of each in our deck if we were to run three of each but it is a pretty disruptive powerful play to play spark it zeus nexus on turn one before your opponent can even respond and rip out their most important cards and get that information going a lot of the times i've done that my opponent's able to use something like drops elite to shuffle their hand back but it's still a pretty powerful effect and get you lots of card advantage if it stays on board long enough we run jolton just to get a, an early five attack elestral so we use jolton to find our stadium to now use the stadium we get jolton sack up to five it also gets spark it up to five and a strap it to six defense making a pretty decent card overall also makes like a vault easily up to 10 attack or more Astrap because Astrap is a great thunder card for filtering, finding combo pieces, finding things like Thunderstorm that we're going to need to get past back row in this deck because we don't have a ton of back row disruption. Speaking of, we have Thunderstorm, we're also running Helios Chariot Ride. So again, Like a Vault needs to attack to be effective. So we need ways to get over counter runes that are already set, and that's Thunderstorm, Helios Chariot Ride, and Trident Poseidon, Poseidon combo. Generally, we're going to use Thunderstorm to clear out back row, Helios Chair Ride, so we can either cement a Like Vault into play over a Poison Dipped Arrow, or prevent our opponents from maybe removing a Like Vault if they have no face downs on their board yet. We can use Helios Chair Ride, keep them from guessing of invokes on the Like Vault. Zeus, generally there for synergy with things like Spark It. Sometimes it'll, the stat reduction is useful, so we only run two because it's not going to be synergistic on everything in this deck. A couple Gorgon Skazes, Tsunamis for just counter rune package shield again counter rune package just a little bit of removal and defensive cards two boom bat because we have no hard destruction in this deck unless we want to put some earthquakes in but i felt the boom bats are a little bit more on theme with the element and you could potentially play a boom bat after spark it use spark it to nexus the boom bat then disenchant the boom bat to keep the boom bat alive protect it with tsunami and such so i put two boom bats in this deck and then one Ambrosia just because we want a little bit of recovery just in case. It's, it's always useful. So that's the deck. Uh, I got a couple games coming up for you. I only got a couple games in because most of the games were against new players. And those aren't really great watches because they're very slow and letting people learn the game. But I did get two very good games in with Like of All that really I think showcases the power of like Like of Vault and Discard in general. So enjoy those games and I'll see you guys with the wrap up. All right, game one with the deck against Baron. Hello, Baron. <laughs> if you guys don't know Baron of Realization, he plays this game a ton himself. Uh, I'm curious to see what he's going to play against me, but uh, he's letting me go first, and I have a really good hand. So at the Gorgon's case, protect everything, but we're going to obviously start with a rabbit because we want to look at the top few cards of our deck. And see what we got. We want to generally try and find Thunderstorm. We also go for the Trident here to try and protect ourselves against Shield and such. But I think we're going for the Stadium first. That's just a safer bet. If I get Trident, I'd have to also get Poseidon, and that's a little bit risky. 
So we'll start with the rabbit, grab the stadium. We'll play the stadium just to get a nice big defense bump. And then play everything face down. Because I don't need Zeus face up right now. And I do want to keep my Gorgon's gazes generally protected for the time being. And we'll end our turn and see what he's got to go against us. Uh, I know Baron loves playing water deck, so I'm going to assume he's playing water. But I can't always assume everything. See what he's got. Okay, he's playing Earth. Which means he's probably playing fully forest. If he has fully forest here, I'm going to feel real upset. Or he can just play a bunch of face down. This is, this is what the issue is with... <laughs> like, I can ascend a Lycavolt here and try to get over the Tectorus, but I'll probably get shielded. And then I'll have a, a dead hand. I can also ascend and just sit for a moment. So we can try and bait out the PTA here, or I can draw a card for turn. Um... I think the best play here would be to actually try and get over the Sectorus early because he might play an Equal Links or something and that won't be good. And even if he has Poison Tipped Arrow here, I get over Poison Tipped Arrow, I'd have to avoid Tsunami, which I'm going to actually misenchant to hopefully avoid Tsunami here. I'm not too worried about the discard. This will get me to 7 attack. And... Uh, Let's just go for it. I, I don't expect this to hit. I think he's going to shield it, but we'll see what happens. Oh, I got it. Cool. All right. Early early start. Now, I don't get the discard out of it because I'm misenchanted, but that at least, you know, it avoided Tsunami potential plays from him, and I have a seven attacker with two Gorgon's Gaze to defend it, and if I need to play, I can play Zeus and use Zeus to also pretend it. The best draw I can get right now would be a Spark It. If I get a Spark It, I can actually properly enchant the Lyca Vault by nexusing from a face down Zeus to Lyca Vault without having to re enchant and then start getting in with the uh, the discard effect. But we'll see what happens. He's really thinking. So I have a feeling that one of those cards is probably Tsunami. I do know Baron plays a lot of water, but he's playing Earth and Fire so far. Maybe this is some kind of Valkyrie Tectoris thing. And he just discarded to draw that's a really good sign for me more face down is not a good sign hopefully i draw some oh okay thunderstorm let's uh use thunderstorm on that new face down that he just played and hope it's not another bluff of some kind let's see what he's got this is why we play Thunderstorm. Everyone everyone says words, you're wrong. Don't play Thunderstorm. Thunderstorm is great. Um, I'm actually gonna expend a draw here as well. I, I have a board lead, there's no reason for me not to. And that's a great play for next turn. So we're just gonna go and try to attack for two and see what he says. He didn't protect the Tectorus, so I have a feeling that he's got nothing to defend against this. Alright, cool. Another two damage. And then next turn we drop the Spark it, play the Zeus, Nexus over to Lycavolt, take a peek at his hand. And then we get two decently powerful Lestrals on the board. I'm still really curious what those face downs are, if not Poison Tipped. It could be Poison Tip and a Tsunami, and he just was expecting something else. He expended to draw again? Oh no. He's in a bad spot. <laughs> I don't know how the Psycho Vault is doing so much work, but it's doing a lot of work right now. I'm so curious as to what he even has faced out. Oh, there's another Thunderstorm. So let's just start off the bat with that. Let's, let's take a peek at this. Destroy that. If this is Tsunami, I'm going to be... Oh, Altar. Okay. So he's got nothing to play Altar with. We're going to play the Spark It here. We'll flip our Zeus. We'll give Zeus two. And we're going to use Spark It here. To Nexus. One from Zeus. Over to here, and let's take a peek at his hand. Infernal? Tectorus. Kinleo. 
Necrof. And Viserys. I, I definitely want to get rid of that Viserys first, I think. The Viserys has a chance of going super wide and crazy. Uh, and now we just go in for the big dam. Hit him for four. He goes to ten. He can play a, a Necroft, but I have Gorgon's Gazes to stop the Necroft, so it's always solid. I can see why he didn't want to play the stuff into my Lyca Vault, because my Lyca Vault would just let me see his hand and make him discard more stuff. So I, I understand why he's been doing so much drawing. And that's kind of the threat of Lyca Vault, is just your opponent has to basically get through Lyca Vault. If they just play defensive stuff, you're just going to rip their hand apart. He's probably going to go try to knock out my Spark it here, because it's a lot of threat. But we can just Gorgons it, give him a feels bad moment. We're going to use some Water Spears here because I'm running low on Thunder. Stop the attack. And put him in a real bad spot. Alright, we're going to start with this. Now, I don't know what he played face down. But we'll at least see his hand. He's going to have the Trifernal's hand still. He's going to have the Kinley on his hand still. Um, hopefully we can see some other draws. The doors, the Kinleo. Yeah, I guess we'll just knock out the Kinleo. The Kinleo, if he gets like a Fessish or something, he's going to get a lot of board control from that. And uh, we go... I think we risk this like a vault here for more discard. See what he does. Fair enough. He's Gorgon's it. I still have a six attack spark it here. That can get over you. That's going to deal one damage to him. Get rid of that Necroph. Okay, it was a tsunami. See, this is why we miss enchant. This is this is why you miss enchant. Just remember that. Now he's got to get another counter in here, or he is in big trouble. Well, I guess... Oh, okay. He did get a face down. Um, he can just play a Tectorus here and get over my Spark Itch. Which... I guess is fair. There's no way I can protect the Spark it, so I think... What I do here is cast this. Never know what to pick there. We'll just hit the spark. The Tectorus isn't getting over my Lyca Vault anyway, so that way I don't take the extra expend from the damage and uh, I can move on from there. Jolton is another nice big fat beater and it will reduce the total amount of cards in my deck so I draw hopefully better. Play Boombat here to guarantee removal. I'm going to play the Jolton. He's just a nice big attack stick. Give an alert there. Take a peek in my deck for my one other... Oh, there it is. Alright. Shuffle that. Now I have two decently sized beaters. So this Jolton is at 5. This Lyca Volt is at 7. We're going to start with the Jolton. Not Nexusing. They move some of the menus around. I'm just trying to uh, remember where everything is. So we're going to start by using Jolton on Tectorus. See if it hits. And we're going to attempt the Lyca Vault on the Necroft. He might have a shield here, but that means he's taking three and he goes to two. Ooh, or Gorgons again. That's fair. He still takes the two, but he gets to save his hand. He still has another Tectorus and a Trifernal in his hand. I think I got the game here, but we'll see what he does. Okay, he's got a Viserys, so he can start just pumping out Viseruses here. I mean, that's fair, but... It isn't going to get him. Like If he plays another Viserys here, I just tack over the Necro from win the game, right? Right? <laughs> I, I'm not missing anything here. 
he's got no runes, he just drew the Viserys. So I just attack him with Lycan Vault and get the GG. Is he going to attack the Lycan Vault himself? Just to end it <laughs> on his own terms? <laughs> oh, there's, there's the GG. Alright. GG Baron. GG. Playing this card boy, he's a little bit more experienced than... But this game should be a little bit more interesting, I think. Okay. This is a pretty good opening hand. We're going to start with that amp up discard. Go look for more amp ups. As one does. Get them out of a deck. And now... A lot of people like to say, oh, it's deck thinning. I don't think deck thinning two cards is necessarily the best play in the world. But it's still a pretty solid play. And I'm going to be able to do this spark it stuff right now. I'll put two on Zeus just because I'm going to be using it pretty much a lot. We'll alert that ability. Next is off the Zeus. Just one, just in case. Majesty, Sorlet. Sorlet. Oh my. Got a bunch of Sorlets. Circle the sky. So we just. Knock out that Sorlet. Yeah. Knock out a Sorlet. That's frustrating. But I can counter the Sorlet with my uh, Dalton next turn. But I'm going to pretty much lose my Spark it here. But I do know he's playing a Majesty. And he's got Drop of Leith. So he, he, knowing his hand here is not super important. Because he can just ship his hand away. Uh, he did respect the back row last time I played him. So he might not attack with his one uh, face down in the back. But he really should because he's got to get this spark it out of the way as soon as he can. One big thing to note, he didn't have any counter runes, which is pretty important, unless he drew a third sorlet, but one card I don't know. I'm curious, I don't know what he's gonna, what he's trying to do with wind and water here. Like he's got nexus stuff, he's got wind, he's got water, he's got majesty. I don't know what his game plan is, I mean, maybe he's playing some weird Zephrog stuff, but why would you play Majesty with Zephrog? So I literally don't know what his hand is at all anymore, which, yeah, it's going to be what it's going to be. I guess if I didn't want to lose the Spirits here on the swing back, I could have dropped Spark it down to Zeus, but I wouldn't have known his hand beforehand, so that's a stupid statement, Tim. All right. Hopefully he didn't get any counter runes. I'll just play the Jolt in the stadium next turn. I hope he has a stadium here and he plays it, because then I can just play mine and crack back. I'm pretty sure he plays the stadium in this deck. I just I don't know what the deck is trying to do with a Majesty. Aeolus. So he can just go find his third Sorlet after I crack that Sorlet down. Right? If he doesn't use it, Aeolus, I can Thunderstorm and knock it out. That is relevant. Okay, yeah, see, he really, really, really respects things that he might not need to necessarily respect. I think I'm just going to go full on aggro here. And we're going to... So he respects the back row, I think, a little bit more than he needs to, because I think he should have gone for the attack here. Um... But now I just get this free two Nexuses. Take a peek at his hand. And then I'm going to hit him for like five or four damage here and rip out two cards from his hand and I'm going to destroy the Aeolus. Not looking good for him. Chrysor. Okay, so he's doing like an attack directly deck. All right, let's uh, get rid of that. So he's got no more shorts. Oh, he could play Carrion. That would be clever. 
All right, now we're going to cast this thunderstorm so he can't use that Aeolus. And then we ascend into Light Vault, crash into Sorlet, deal four, and rip the Sluggle out of his hand. And for safety, we stick a water on this in case he has Tsunami. Deal four. Rip his hand again. Now he's stuck with a two drop in hand that he can't cast, and he takes four damage. He might be uh, in his expend menu, you might not have seen the. Okay, they sell the discard. And then he's just got to take four damage. All right, there's his uh, four damage, and uh, he's got to hope to top deck shield, or boom bat, or earthquake, or I mean, there's not a ton of stuff that gets him out of here. Now that I have it in play, yeah, shield gets. I mean, shield will help him, but I can start building my board up around the like of all. All right, he's gonna have to stall with the Sluggle. Probably should have played that in defense. Well, asked me to play defense. He passed turn, so I think he's just letting himself uh, lose the game here. I think he realized how <laughs> he's in a tough spot. So now I just. Uh, Make this giant like volt gianter. Attack the sluggle. Rip the Chrysor. Deal another four damage. And attack the deck. So that's a uh, discard. Expend five. All right, I spoke to him a little bit. We're calling the Sluggle in defense position just because <laughs> it's a lot of damage. Otherwise, a lot of people are still learning, and he's already—I've already pretty much cemented my lead, and he's top decking. So, I mean, I have a like of what with what twelve attack right now in play, and if I want to make my like of I can make him sixteen attack. Ooh, it's expanding to draw. So I potentially hit him for seven if he doesn't draw a shield. At this point, even if he draws a shield, I'm still hitting him really hard. I know he doesn't have any Sorlets anymore. The only thing I'm really worried about here is carry on. That he's got a oh, that is a great draw to further cement my victory. Show him Two amp ups. Shuffle them away. That's the best use for the amp ups, honestly. It's just making Leith a plus one overall. For one more spirit, and also you get to see more cards. Let's just ascend here, because that's that's the fun That's the fun way to win here. So, uh, let's attack that. I could have played Poseidon here and done another damage, but that's seven total. I, I don't know what he does with three spirits left. Him losing the Sorlets, which is probably his biggest counter in a Wind Water deck to the Lyca Vault stuff early, probably cemented why he's struggling here. But yeah, I think overall... Decent, uh, decent overall performance of the deck. He's getting pretty l unlucky with the the lack of the draws here. Honestly, though, if he turn one used that Sorlet to destroy my Sparkip and didn't fear that face down, it would have been a completely different game. I. Th I think the lack of destroying that spark it lost in the game early. Because it's just 
yeah, it was a bluff face down. He wouldn't have known that, but he should have also realized that having Spark it and Zeus in uh, in play, speaking of Spark it, in play all together is just a lot of just two for one, three for ones over time. We'll do this, Nexus there. Whoops, not from tax card to receive spirits. There we go. So, I don't know, we'll just do that. <laughs> it doesn't really matter too much here. And then we attack. Rip that one out. Attack the spirit deck for two. And attack the spirit deck for five. GG. That was a good one. Again, that Sorlet misplay, I think, at the start where he just kind of had to risk the Sorlet would have probably won him the game if he did that. But uh, that was a good one overall. All right, so the deck performed very well in these two matches. I had a couple games where I got slaughtered. I had a couple games for back and forth a bit more, but generally, it's I think for a legable deck, it did its it did work. I mean, I didn't get to use Healer's Chait right effectively in most games, and the games you just saw, I never even drew it. But it is a pretty powerful card for using it at the right timing to cement the Like Vault into play and getting an attack in at the same time. So although a Healer's Chair Ride and Triumph Sign of Sign didn't see a ton of use in these videos. At least you saw the rest of the deck just absolutely just shred. In the first game, I mentioned in my uh, five tips video, if you haven't watched that yet, about misenchanting, drawing for turn, all that jazz. Like, I used all that to a T in that game against Baron. And I, when I was playing that game, I'm like, wait, I just made this video about five tips, and here are all the tips in action. So if you haven't seen that five tips video, literally game one against Baron and the five tip video mesh so well together just showing off exactly what I mean in those videos uh in the second game if my opponent didn't respect the face down as much uh, which was a complete bluff against that sorlet and attacked my spark it I probably would have I wouldn't maybe not lost the game but the game would have been vastly different if he destroyed my spark it on turn one there and then not let me rip all of his other sorlets out of his hand and just manipulate the rest of the game from there. He probably should have risked that Spark it kill because if Spark it stays alive for very long with Zeus in play, it is a pretty powerful board state. You really want to make sure you're running that invoke and just pro proactive removal against that situation. But generally, I think this deck performed way better than I expected. It's a very fun deck to play. If you like Thunder, you like Lycavolt, I would suggest trying it out. You could probably take out some of the water package, maybe go for New Helios Chariot Ride, take out the Poseidon and Trident, but they're also there as backup spark at fodder. Your mileage may vary. Uh, I don't think this is the best level deck, but I definitely think it's a deck that showed off exactly what it's trying to do. And uh, we'll see how people play it in the future. Because I am curious to see what people try to do with more hand disruption decks. Maybe they add some more tie flights and other discard stuff in there that way. I don't know. But that is the end of this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Again, if you want to be a part of the next poll, just uh, hit that bell button, subscribe. You'll see it in the community tab. And uh, let me know what deck you want to see next week. And I'll see you guys in the next one.